so for the technical example of financial instruments like uh, in some industries of brewing and heating gas industries the entities distribute their products in returnable containers often these entities will collect cash deposit for each container delivered which they have an obligation to refund on return of the container such arrangement represents a contract to exchange a non-financial item which is the container for cash and therefore outside the scope of IAS 32 and IFRS 9. However, based on the IFRIC interpretation, if the container ceases to be an asset of the entity when the sale is made, the related cash deposit is a non-financial asset. If the container is not recognized, the entity cannot be regarded as receiving the non-financial asset because the accounting treatment regards the entity as retaining the asset. Therefore, the deposit simply represents a financial obligation to the transfer of cash and is therefore a financial liability. For other industries like oil industries, uh, financial instruments also include contracts that give rise to non-financial asset or non-financial liability. In addition to non-financial asset or financial liability, such arrangements often give one party an option to exchange a financial asset or a non-financial asset. For example, in oil industries, an oil-linked bond or commodity-linked bond may give the holder the right to receive a stream of fixed period interest payment and a fixed amount for a fixed quantity of oil. The desirability of exercising this option will vary over the time depending on the fair value of the oil relative to the exchange ratio of cash for oil inherent in the bond. But the intentions of the bond the holder do not affect the substance of the component of the assets. So, the commodity link bonds, it could have a right to receive a stream of fixed periodic interest payments and fixed amount of cash on maturity, or it has also the optional right to exchange a principal amount for a fixed quantity of oil. So this um, part of the contract do not affect the substance of the component of the assets. Thus, the financial asset of the holder and the financial liability of the issuer made the bond a financial instrument regardless of the other types of assets and liabilities also created. So we also have compound financial instruments. So while many financial instruments are either a liability or equity in their entirety, that is not true for all financial instruments issued by the entity. Some refer to as a compound financial instrument in IAS 32, which contains both elements. A compound financial instrument is a non-derivative financial instrument that from the issuer's perspective contains both liability and equity component. So that is based on IS 32 paragraph 28. So examples of compound financial instruments are convertible bonds, bonds with share warrants, convertible instruments with embedded derivatives, convertible instruments with ratchet features, and mandatorily redeemable preference shares. So, uh, based on the IS32 initial recognition, um, the, uh, financial instruments uh, is subject to split accounting treatment. So, on initial recognition of a compound financial instrument, IS32 requires the issuer to identify the various component of the instrument, determine the fair value of the liability component, including the embedded non-equity derivative features. It must also determine the equity component as a residual amount, essentially the issue proceeds of the instrument, less the liability. But before we discuss those uh, requirements by the IS32, we, know, we must know what split accounting is. So in order to qualify for a split accounting, the financial instrument when considered as a whole must be a non-derivative instrument. So 
after such qualification that a financial instrument is a non-derivative in its entirety, then we go now on the step of for split accounting. So we, we must first identify the various components of the instrument. Then, we need to determine the fair value of the liability component, including the embedded non-equity derivative features. In case of uh, convertible instruments with embedded derivatives. And then last one, we have to determine the equity component as a residual amount of the issue proceeds. So sample problem, an entity issued bonds with face amount of 5 million pesos at 105. So meaning to say the 5 million pesos is the face amount which was purchased at 105%. The bonds contain a conversion privilege that provides for an exchange of 1,000 peso bond for 20 shares with par value of 50 pesos. It is reliably determined that the bond would sell only at 95 without the conversion privilege. So remember the steps for split accounting. We must first know the component of the liability. So is there only a liability component or was there also a, an equity component? So we need to check. So on the problem, uh, it issued a bond. So when it issued a bond, there is a liability component on which there is a conversion privilege to provide for 20 shares with par value of 50 pesos. So with that, uh, we we already identified that there are two components in the compound financial instrument, a liability component and then the equity component. Now we need to get to know the total issue price, the liability component, and then the equity component. So on the total issue price, we know uh, we already computed it because there is a 5 million issued at 105%. And then for the liability component, it is reliably determined that the bonds would sell only at 95 without the conversion privilege. So that's 5 million times 95% and then 5 million times 105%. Then we need to squeeze the equity component as a residual amount. So that's split accounting treatment. Then for the journal entry, since uh, it is a receipt of cash, we, we have to debit cash 5,250,000 and then credit bonds payable since uh, it is the entity who issued the bond, so it is their liability which amounts to 4,750,000 pesos, which is the liability component itself, and then the difference is an equity component, so we credit share options outstanding. So IS32 notes that the equity component of convertible bond is embedded option to convert the liability into equity of the issuer and then the fair value of the option comprises of its time value and its intrinsic value if any and this option has value and initial recognition even without of money. So I think Everything has been discussed for financial instruments presentation and I hope everyone had uh, learned a lot regarding uh, IAS 32 presentation of financial statements and how to classify it based on um, the financial instrument structure. So see you next meeting. Thank you.